years old when I remember, you know, like throwing an internal tantrum because I didn't really know, you know, it's like, be quiet. Can't you just look pretty and not like be seen, but not heard. And so of course, like all of me just wanted to just be like, I'm just going to blend into my environment not knowing human design at the time, I've got seven undefined centers and in my body, correct me if I'm wrong with these mechanical terms, like in my body, I'm a reflector. So like, I know how to blend in. I know how to keep myself safe. I know how to just like, gone, she's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but that six-year-old Jamie was like, the buck stops here. I will not repeat what they are doing. Mm. I will not pass this on to the next generation and if it welcome to whole and unleashed a podcast about coming home to ourselves i'm your host jessica Locke, a holistic mindset strala yoga and human design guide this podcast is not about telling you what to do it's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, welcome. I am so excited for today's conversation. And I know I say that for every episode, but I genuinely am so excited and grateful for these conversations that can be so deeply moving and healing. Today's special guest is my dear friend Jamie. She's become like a sister to me even though we've known each other for a year or so in this lifetime (laughs) and I've been so inspired, so fascinated by who she is, what she does. We bonded over our cultural heritage, finding ourselves existing in this world, being entrepreneurs with an online business, amongst many, many other things. Jamie is a psychosomatic therapist, transformation guide, Akashic Records reader, Kundalini yoga teacher, a 5-1 emotional manifester who specializes in educating and mentoring clients navigating significant periods of growth and transformation. Here's our conversation. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you for coming on the podcast. (laughs) Thank you so much, Jess. It's such an honor and always so fun to speak in real time. I know, I know. And a bit of background, would you like to introduce a little bit about who you are, what you do? No pressure. (laughs) So um, I am located here in Brisbane, Australia on the East Coast. I am Singaporean Chinese, Singaporean born, and I have been living in Australia for just over 21 years. Um, My work really spans across a really full and diverse range. Um, I specialize in working with people from the body, mind, spirit, and soul level. So from the underworld, this is shamanic um, terminology or earth-based wisdom terminology the underworld with the ancestry with their past lives with previous incarnations you know with our shadow self I mean that in itself it's a whole podcast and Mm -hmm. also the middle world this life this body this experience this this relational field um the spiritual realm and also from a soul level um with the celestial planetary and akashic field so yes I I'm a bit of a one-stop shop <laughs> <laughs> because I, I I deeply um believe that there is not just one way. Mm-hmm. Um and that the person, a person, every person is multidimensional, multi-layered, multifaceted. And so um yeah, I'm really, really proud of the the palette that I have accumulated. Um, and studied over the last eight to ten years and I have no doubt that it will continue to grow Mm, the more I follow my curiosity and and trusting trusting where I'm being led 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you for this beautiful intro. And I know that wasn't always the case, the type of work you do. I know it kind of found you or you found it. And to add a little bit of human design context for those that are curious, <laughs> Jamie is a 5-1 emotional manifester with the left angle cross of education. And tell me a little bit about how your how this work found you or how you stumbled across this work? That's a really good, really good question. How far back are we going? <laughs> um, so it started right at the beginning of Saturn Return. I mean, that was when it accelerated, I would say. But I, prior to that, my previous career was a environmental scientist project officer I worked in mining oil and gas um and really really enjoyed it really enjoyed the fast-paced environment and but I wasn't looking after my health mm -hmm. so I didn't realize how much anger and inflammation was in my body and I couldn't really go on long hikes there was one time this was pre-set and return I would go on like a two hour, two, two to four hour hike, which is really nothing in the scheme of hiking. Um, and I could not walk for two weeks. I couldn't bend my knees for two weeks. And so that was the catalyst of, okay, go and see a physio, go and see a chiropractor. And somewhere along the lines through the friendship group, I heard about yoga and I ha heard about um, you know, how people would float out of class. And so at the time I was in a gym, going to the gym three times a day, working full time, you get the gist. No wonder I had inflammation in my body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I started going to yoga um, with the m mental intellectual, like, okay, if I go to enough classes and I see the physio and I see the chiro, enough, you know, we'll be able to, you know, fix my hips or, or whatever, you know, whatever's happening. And when Saturn Return hit, that was when things really accelerated. I found myself at, at another yoga retreat. I've been practicing pretty regularly by then. Um, and it was interesting. You can weave the human design aspect, the 1222 channel, which is my one and only channel, um, into this because it was the only time that I could like find that deep peace is through the chanting at the end of class mm. like the the phys I love the you know the physical asana component to it um and was I'm naturally very very flexible so you know it fueled something in me of like look I look at me I can you know do these postures so well and I'm like oh my gosh Jamie like that was all ego but hey human here yeah um so so yeah and when Saturn return hit um uh, my first ever first ever and long-term relationship fell apart um and the only time I could cry was at the end of class in child's pose mm -hmm. um and when we would be chanting so so I was like there's something here and it reminded me of um, my days singing in in a school choir back in Singapore as well. Like I really enjoyed that that as an extracurricular compulsory extracurricular activity mm -hmm. that we all had to choose. So I'm so grateful for that little that connection of like, yeah. oh, that's why I love using my voice. Mm -hmm. What a surprise! <laughs> yeah, and has it always been easy to tap into that to use your voice I I'm asking because you know growing up with my Chinese background with a lot of the fear of an of our ancestry instill in us to play it small to not be too loud because as Chinese immigrants there was a lot of survival in the way that we were raised <laughs> so tapping into our mm -hmm. voice unless we have something super eloquent to say unless we have a point unless you know all those different requirements was so hard especially when it comes to tapping into our emotions how was that mm -hmm. journey for you um excruciating and still I still feel really challenged by it 
um, which is kind of hilarious because, you know, I've taught yoga for the last eight years and I have a podcast. I am on a podcast right now. And it's like, you speak fine, Jamie, but the internal challenge is still, it's still there. Um, speaking, speaking up, tapping to my voice. It really opened up when I turned 13, when I went from primary school, I went to a very conservative, all Chinese primary school. And when I went, when it came to picking um, a secondary school or, or high school, depending on where you, or senior, no, not senior, middle school. Um, anyway, secondary school in Singapore. I'm so grateful that the stars aligned and I ended up in a multicultural all girls school, which is a autonomous school. So not a government school, not mm. a independent school, so autonomous. Um, and I joined the cheerleading team. My piano teacher at the time threatened to stop teaching me piano. You know, threats always Wait. work with teenagers. Wait, um, why? What was the I, correlation? <laughs> oh, I wanted to play um, uh, basketball because I loved the basketball teacher. Mm -hmm. And my piano teacher basically said, if you're going to sign up for the compulsory extracurricular activity, if you choose basketball, I'm going to stop teaching you. Can you go choose something musical to support your piano exams? <sighs> and so then I joined the choir. I, I auditioned and got accepted into joining the choir, but it was in that secondary school. If you're a Singaporean listening to this, TKGS, Tanjung Katong Girls School, so, so, so grateful that I studied there for four years. Um, yeah, I joined the cheerleading team. I joined the choir from the second year. So secondary school is four years. Um, and I really found my voice. I found that confidence and it really opened things up for me. And when I would come home with, you know, with this confidence, because you can't be meek and small being part of the cheerleading team. <laughs> um, and of course, everything's a competition. So, you know, you're in it to win it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there was just a lot more freedom in that school in, in, nurturing mm. girls and my mom would would always reprimand me it's like well you shouldn't we shouldn't have let you go to this school now now you've suddenly become naughty I'm like because I'm confident mm. because I am I have a voice now like I've tapped into this new aspect I'm not this scared shy impressionable you know kind of mold that you can shape in whatever way you want mm. so that was actually the beginning of like oh this is what it feels like yeah this is what it feels like and this is what it feels like to master something because again choir practice was not something a walk in the park like you're not allowed to yawn after we've warmed up you're not allowed to yawn mm -hmm you will like this is militant right this is the this is the upbringing that i <laughs> i experienced and i'm yeah. so grateful for it so grateful for it but can also see so many outdated ways that are you know there's new ways of doing it hello manifesto yeah yes but, <laughs> adding you know the manifesto <laughs> into the mix you know to add some additional kind of understanding of like as a child, you know, little manifestors, they already want to do their own things. They want to express them. It's like a very strong, people on the outside would say as a stubborn energy, but it really is not you trying to be difficult. It's just you trying to carve your own path. And as a parent, I'm not a parent yet, but I can, I can just imagine the worry of like, I want to ensure you have a good future, but I can, their love comes in control. You know, if I can control you, then I know you will be okay. Which yeah. now we know, you know, growing older, going through our own journey, you know, control doesn't necessarily mean it's a good ending or like happy butterfly rainbow road. It's mm -hmm. just like the illusion of control is what keeps so many of us small, unable to 
tap into our expression or being just too afraid to get out of line especially Mm -hmm. in that culture and in our upbringing where like if you get out of line something happens to you like for my mom she was so eager to get out of China because my grandfather her dad went to jail for speaking up against the government and someone in the office ratted him out and he is the most gentle soul ever like most gentle like I've never met a man that was so pure so loving because he he was abused as a child like they would beat him for singing in during dinner and he used to hum during dinner and they would beat him for that you know and in China in this Asian country there was a lot of things you were not allowed to do (laughs) so he grew up being the complete opposite and the fact that he was like you know that's not fair we shouldn't do this to other people and then got dragged and then that changed my mom's perception like no we're leaving China but doesn't mean that she doesn't carry that trauma (laughs) and then get passed on to us as well of like we need to stay in line we need to stay in line don't cause trouble but also shine shine get you know grade a get you know 100 mark always have perfect always be perfect because if you're not perfect yes you'll get in trouble yes yeah exactly exactly and and the the fear of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time again learning understanding human design like that's such the 12th line right it's like if you say the the right thing at the wrong time it's gonna hurt someone like you know and again everything is going to hurt someone. I could say the word carrots and that we're offending someone right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean to offend you because I said carrots, but mm. again, right? Like, yes. Oh my gosh. Can we talk a little bit about that? Like press your, your you have the provocation gate and then you're also a fifth line. You're also a <laughs> manifester with the 1222. So it's almost a combination of those energy entails like wherever you show up, you might not even speak a word your mere present can provoke someone into be like you know just projecting all the reactions to you yes yes I yeah yeah yep <laughs> yes <laughs> oh gosh where, where where do we where do we start like it's it's a it's a it's a ripe I'm gonna call it ripe it's a ripe combination you know being an Asian woman and I'm like tiny in height like I'm 156 centimeters who knows I think like five foot one or something like I'm really small and I'm a manifester I'm a Scorpio moon and Scorpio rising in astrological term I'm Gemini sun I've got a whole ton of plutonic aspects in my astrological chart and of course it translates over to human design can't speak on how how it does um but you know, it's like I have, or my soul at least has, you know, really chosen to break free from a lot of conditioning this in this life. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I'm, I, I fully trust it. And I always, always trust that we get given, um, we, we can handle what we get given, you know, and we don't get given what we can't handle. And mm-hmm. so that has almost been my driving force especially around that Saturn return like there were three things I know I'm going on some tangent but we're just going to trust it um like the three things that really really supported me especially at the beginning phases of feeling like I've just had my arm and leg chopped off metaphorically um walking out of that relationship was um what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and we we can handle what we get given Mm. no matter how challenging and we reap what we sow we were just talking before we hit record we we were just talking about planting seeds um and so I look back and go yeah I've always always sought change Mm. in 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 life and I've always known I don't remember whether you remember me sharing this um, when we recorded for my podcast last year of I was six years old. At least that's what I remember it to be. I was six years old when I remember, you know, like throwing an internal tantrum because I didn't really know, you know, it's like, be quiet. Can't you just look pretty and not like be seen, but not heard. And so of course, like all of me just wanted to just be like, I'm just going to blend into my environment. 
not knowing human design at the time, I've got seven undefined centers and in my body, correct me if I'm wrong with these mechanical terms, like in my body, I'm a reflector. So like, I know how to blend in. I know how to keep myself safe. I know how to just like gone, she's gone. Mm -hmm. Um, but that six-year-old Jamie was like, the buck stops here. I will not repeat what they are doing. Mm. I will not pass this on to the next generation. And if it, if I can't do that, then I may as well not have kids. Mm. I'm single. I'm not married. I don't have kids. Who knows if any of those things will eventuate. Um, but, but yeah. And, and back to your question, I'm circling back. There is some connection here um, around like using, using my voice and being afraid of saying the wrong thing. Uh, it's really helped me back. It's really helped me back um, of being punished. I mean, you've just shared, you know, like you you have that trauma, that generational trauma within the family of like you said the wrong thing, the government's going to, you know, attack you. And, and if anything, that's so much of the Singaporean... <sighs> fear being instilled into mm. you, into us. Yeah. Um, and I just remember we, before we hit record, we were just, I was flipping through this book called Chinese Whispers. And I remembered now where the page was, I actually took a photo. So if you don't mind me yes, um, please. reading this part about... Singapore also has a tendency to send troublesome authors who criticize the state to jail or to hound them out of the territory. Mm -hmm. So I'll just let that ripple out. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> um, feel free to any first lines out there, feel free to fact check that, triple blind study that. <laughs> it's by a book by Ben Chu titled Chinese Whispers. Again, who knows how true. It's a nonfiction book and it's really well written. But anyway, that's the environment that I was seated in. Right, yeah. And where there's so much fear, so much fear. There's a fine for everything. It's like Singapore is a fine country. You get fined for spitting. You get fined for chewing gum. You know, you get... Chewing gum, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's, it, you know, as I've grown from that, because um, I now have spent more than half my life here in Australia, the thing that comes up, the question that I have is like, at what cost? At what cost? That's all well and good. That's all fine. But at what cost? Mm -hmm. And for what's the motivation to to uphold what? Mm. To please who? Like whose approval question. are you trying to get? Who are you actually trying to compete with? What is the actual agenda here? And whose agenda is it? So many and people. Yeah, yeah, sorry. No, no, that's like... I just want to say so many people are even afraid to ask or look into those questions because it can open up so much. And I don't think they have the capacity to even handle or go there because their beliefs, their ideals, they might know this is not the strongest. It crumbles and it's, and it's disheartening because if they do look into it, they might find that their entire lives they've been, you know, muting their expression because when you were talking about the six-year-old Jamie I'm like you've had to mute your power as a manifester as a human being you know someone with all like that's really here to share your emotional wisdom and just feel so strongly and share that with the world but to be in a society that is the complete opposite that's afraid of emotions that's afraid of anybody for speaking and then also as a woman you know who are you and having to kind of, I know part of so much of what you do and who you are today is like the work you've done to kind of like really reclaim those things that were seen as flaws, but actually embrace them as 
gifts. Yes. Yeah, and and there is there is it, it it's 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 that's the transformation, but it is in the transformation that we find the empowerment. Because if we only focus on the gifts, yes, there is absolutely, you know, so much truth in that. And everyone's going to have their own opinion and journey with an experience with that. But where that, where, where we take those, the, the, the learnings, you know, and transform that into gifts, Mm -hmm. you know, it, it it holds a totally different energy to to be just like you know I was born musician and that's beautiful too you know, um, but yeah there there is something quite sacred and mm. very magnetic and very seductive when 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 the gift you know we maybe when it's received who knows but you know when that m- mud is transformed into a lotus. Mm. Oh, I love that. And that was something that I was just like, I think sharing earlier with you in a voice text about how like, we're in a world that is obsessed with shortcuts, shortcuts into feeling better shortcuts. And I get it, you know, once in a while, you do need to pop an Advil, you need something to feel better. But the shortcuts without the transformation, without the middle messy part moving through that, that's where we really hone ourselves. That's the part where we really come into the depths of who we are but it's so uncomfortable and I'm sure the work you do with so many clients the people who you walk through like what is the most resistance that you've noticed when they come to you into doing this work or the fears that come up um I am going to that's a really good question because when I first started seeing clients, which was in April 2016, um, I set a very clear intention and spoke it out loud and, you know, told, was very articulate in saying that. Again, this is the beauty of coming from a very structured corporate environment where it's like, you know, one idea per sentence and, you know, like really succinct communication which I I still struggle with but anyway um I knew what I want I knew the type of client I wanted um and it's almost consistent I don't have a statistic I'm going to just ballpark maybe 90 percent maybe even more that most clients when they come to me they're already ready to change Mm. so um and so there wasn't a lot of resistance it's almost like they they come sometimes I see them for just one session and and I might never see them again because again not knowing anything or much about human design at the time it's like now that I look back in hindsight it's like yeah the the manifest is not meant to hold your hand for the next 16 years And and maybe that might again that is also can be true but it's like when you a manifesto comes in and goes, you have permission now. Like, here's the kink, pivot, off you go. Yeah. So, so yeah, in terms of resistance, I'm like finding like I'm like blank. I'm like, I don't know yeah. how to answer that question in terms of when they come, they're ready for change. Yeah. They're already yeah. ready for change. So it's that. almost like they've already tried, you know, 15 other modalities or or whatever, and then they get to me. So it's always almost like they have been primed either by life. Mm. They have been broke. They already, uh, there we go. They have already, uh, life has already started to break them open. And mm. so when, when they come to me, it's like that the pimple is ripe to be popped. <laughs> Bit graphic, but you know. <laughs> Yes, and, that, and, yeah. and that that's how I that's the the language that I say to clients and when people say like you know so who would come and see you when when they when things are reaching a boiling point in them mm-hmm. that's usually a good 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 time when they already know like yeah I'm I'm done I'm done with this marriage I'm done with this career I really want to confront my people pleasing tendencies as I'm speaking I'm also just like okay the resistant then comes in that accountability 
someone mm-hmm. might come and go, you know, um, I'm just going to make this up. This, uh, this is not anyone's personal information, but like, you know, okay, I have kind of, um, you know, endometriosis symptoms, for example, and I can't seem to quit smoking. Okay. Addictions. Yep energy of sacral chakra all right let's look at your relationships let's look at your um your boundaries but what not your boundaries necessarily with other people because that's immediately where majority would go and where's your boundaries with yourself if you said that you will you want to quit smoking but like where's your boundary with that you know maybe it doesn't have to be a cold turkey and and whatever that's going to take shape but like where's your boundary with yourself and the sacral chakra is so much connect it with the throat chakra like they're like like sisters holding hands you know it's like it's a pulley system with within the, the, <laughs> the two areas right so it's like keeping yourself accountable being honest mm-hmm. and that's a big one mm-hmm. big one around being honest w- with yourself do I really want this do I want change okay then where are all the other parts that are kind of not fully on board and how can we nurture all of those and actually see through the story see through the story of the individual story of Mm. like why not you know and let's go there because which which cell in the body doesn't want to be healthy Mm. yeah what where's the resistance where can we kind of like provoke it because I think that we don't see it when we're so close to our own stories our own struggles and you know when we're in the mud like it's hard to have Mm. an outside perspective which is so helpful to have someone kind of reflect back to us you know Mm -hmm. holding us like it's safe you know you can pop your pimple here and we have what we need to make sure is this infected you know to make sure that it heals you know it's almost like this is part of the energetic work of really just twinking twink twinking is that the right word (laughs) like tweaking 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 yeah energetic tweaking it's like okay now go ahead (laughs) go on yeah and and I want to speak to that for a second um you know it can this the narrative that we can tell ourselves before we pivot before we make that big tweak before we quote-unquote pop the pimple um there can be a narrative of like have I got all my bases covered? And I'm going to to offer uh, uh, this perspective and you know let it dissolve if it doesn't doesn't resonate for 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 you if you're listening to this. Um, that usually when the pimple is right to pop, life has already orchestrated the you know the path has already been laid even if you don't know how, even if you can't see it, right? And it's the body's reptilian primal uh, brain, like it's our primal instinct to resist change and to protect ourselves, to keep ourselves safe, like, you know, protect us from what? Death. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's great. It's like, great, that's working. We're alive and yeah. we're still alive. But then there's also like, when something is ready to reach boiling point, you know, the, the environment, every part, every particle is supporting that change already, Mm -hmm. you know, and of course I'm not saying jump with no parachute, et cetera, et cetera, but, but there's also that perspective to, to take into consideration when the fear is at an all time high, you know, when the control and the gripping and, and, and the resistance is so strong and you're completely inundated. You feel completely inundated by it mm-hmm. to just be like, but what if, but what if life holds me? Life has always held me. So, you know, it comes back to what I said earlier, like what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And again, that's a quite a strong statement, you know, interpret it however you will make it, make it, uh, empowering if that's mm-hmm. not empowering for you just just literally like just flush it down the toilet you know um release it, nothing, release it. yeah 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 mm. how was your journey 
between like learning more about yourself as you know your Saturn return came and everything was ramping out and then there was I guess more it's almost like a flood of like self-awareness how Mm -hmm. did you learn to I guess safely hold that awareness without turning it into like those are all the things that are wrong with me because I totally did that when I was like you know looked into my health I'm like oh my gosh these are all the things I'm doing wrong and it's like all those ideas that you know, if we take that framework, it can be, you know, applied to yoga, applied to human design of like, oh my gosh, awareness. Now, what do we do with this awareness? Where do we hold ourselves? Mm. Um, 10 years post set and return, I'm 37. So I feel qualified to speak about post set and return <laughs> times. Um, um, set and return for me, because because I let that relationship go, like it was it was really, really hard to let it go because the boyfriend at the time, we were together for over nine years or, or nine years and he had an affair for the last three and a half months. Um, and not easy, not easy for anybody to to go through any anything like that. But I kept choosing um, the less easy path. This is Mm going to trigger some people. That's fine. Like the less easy path, it would have been easy to try to make it work, Mm -hmm. to to forgive him, you know, to, to, to buy into the, oh, but you've invested nine years of your life, you know, but it's going to take you x amount of time to heal it's going to take you x amount of time to like start dating again and it's going to take you what another nine years to like get to know someone um and obviously pre-set and return or even during set and return I was like you know yeah husband you know kids marriage house you know all of the things that I grew up learning that I should one and now I'm just like I don't even know one I, I don't I don't I haven't needed any of those things and I'm still working I'm fine and I'm more than fine yeah. you know anyway um, and so sat in return for me because I made those that difficult decision, the less easy, easy, de- less, less easy decision. Life flooded in like mm. I it was like a full on like blossoming of like, oh, now I'm finally free. I'm finally free to do whatever I want with my money. Yeah. For some reason, I didn't feel like I could, even though I, I yeah. And, and, and I felt free to just explore and learning how to walk on my own two feet. And again, the fear body, the, the emotional body was like, you'll never find friends again. All our friends were like in long-term relationships, in couples. I was like, I can't hang out with them because I'm going to be the odd one out. And plus most of those people were his friends anyway. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen to me? Yeah. There were those days crying, eating dinner alone, you know, listening to sad songs, crying even more. But then the minute I followed my curiosity, the minute I lent into fear, it's like, I'm so afraid of being upside down in yoga. I still cannot do a handstand and I probably will never will. And I'm so happy with that. Mm -hmm. But let's sign up for acro yoga. Yeah, You can't do a handstand. Let's try and do it over two people. (laughs) You know, like, it's just like throw caution to the wind. That first year, first two years even, rather than, play the you know when people say like it's if it's not a hell yes if it's not a hell yes it's a no Mm -hmm. for me my I challenged myself and was also initiated into this challenge by another manifester um we didn't know much about human design at the time she's also a manifester um she would always challenge me she's like why not she could feel the fear Mm. in me of like, oh, I better not, better not. What, what if, right? And yeah. and she would always challenge me. She was like, well, why not? And so I'm like, I can't answer that. So it's a hell yes. So if it's a why not, if I can't answer why not, then it's a hell yes. So I said yes to everything, to try everything. Um. And and really confronted myself in mm. in that. Yeah. Even doing yoga teacher training. I was terrified of it. Like, you know, I'm like, I don't like people and I'm afraid (laughs) of speaking. So let's sign me up. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love how sometimes those inner pulls, like that guidance, doesn't make sense at all, but it always leads to something if we're open to it, even if it doesn't make sense, you know? And then it's like, there's always more doors that will be opened once we allow ourselves to be in that experience, however that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and I want to speak briefly about the fifth line projection, you know, like everyone's, I'm trusting most people listening to this understand what the fifth, fifth line, fifth line is. You want to just quickly just sum it up in like two sentences? What is, what is a fifth line? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I can do it. I was like, wait, were you? Yes. I was like, I, I'm like, that's your, that's your. <laughs> Yeah, I can totally do it. Like I've used the house analogies a lot of time, but like today I'm feeling pulled to use something else or a different kind of sharing, but you know, there are six lines, 12 profiles in total, which is like a combination of different lines. And the fifth line is one of those, one of the three lines in the upper hexagram. So there's a lot of energy that is here to really externalize with other people. Fifth line is here to universalize their objective truths. And to do so, the way that energy is able to universalize, it's almost like it attracts projections from others. So the people that are, I know you said two sentences, so sorry. <laughs> the people that are in your aura, they see what you're capable of doing. They see your possibility. They see your potentials. And also they project that onto you. So it's really up to the fifth line to be like, hey, can I actually save today? Do I want to step into that? So yeah, fifth line receives. They feel the projections. They're very aware of how people see them. And it's, yeah, they're so aware of it. And it it's something that can sometimes empower them, but can also feel like a lot because people's projections and expectations are not always the healthiest sometimes. Yeah, ex exactly. And throughout the last 10, 10 years, I have received a lot of, you know, oh, you're so good at this, you should do this. And I've usually followed that. Mm -hmm. um, there has been, I'm so grateful for someone, for that one um, retreat facilitator to like, hey, I can see you as a yoga teacher. You should do yoga teacher training. And I did. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that I did, even though I ended up, you know, switching schools, schools, uh, I'm just going to call them schools, yeah. um, <laughs> two months in because something didn't quite sit right for me with, with who I started with. But had I not followed that, you could call that a projection. Mm -hmm. Who knows what their per that person's agenda is, you know, it doesn't matter. But I'm so glad that I followed that. And then uh, within two, uh, let me see, end of 2013, by March 2015, I got, um, I received a, my role in the corporate realm, got made redundant because they were merging two ginormous companies. And a, again, well-meaning mentor, yoga teacher, someone who I really, you know, trusted, mm -hmm. told me that I should just sell everything. I just moved house, which is, you know, a mammoth effort yeah. in and of itself just moved house, position got made redundant, floating in the wind and, you know, was pouring my heart and soul into studying psychosomatic therapy and yoga therapy and Ayurveda and, you know, you named it, I've studied. <laughs> like literally, I'm like a classic first line. It's quite embarrassing. Anyway. Well, it's um, such a gift. <laughs> Well, thank for, you Jess. for the people you, Jess. around you like for me because I get to learn about so many things just by being in conversation with you <laughs> oh my god oh my god I'm just like oh Jamie Jesus Christ <laughs> get yourself together see see it's still here it's still here and, it, and you know I'm not gonna fight it it's just here it's like all right come on come on sit here have 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 what you need have a marshmallow you know <laughs> um but but that 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 teacher at the time and you know again well-meaning she said that you should not be a yoga teacher. You're, you know, you're not a yoga teacher. You, you're not meant to be a yoga teacher. And I don't understand why you're studying psycho psychosomatic therapy. You know, you, you've just been set free. You should sell everything and go travel the world because get this. That's what they wanted to do. <laughs> because, and, and she actually said this because I didn't get the chance to. 
And that really crushed me. It crushed me because I was like, what? You want me, like, I'm doing the wrong thing. So this is where the doubt, it is my doubt yes. that really um, kind of broke, broke me. Mm. You know, and yes, people are going to say whatever gonna, they're going to say. And that's, you know, their right and their entitlement. That's all great. But it's when I turn information inward to mm. almost attack myself yeah. and go, oh, I'm not doing the right thing by so-and-so, you know, Especially like rewind. Other yeah. But someone that you respected and admire and someone who probably was a part of your first line foundation of like getting into the yoga world and all that and having them say that whatever their intentions live, let's not look at that. But also like, holy mama, like for you to receive it. Plus like you feel that on an energetic level, that feels like a dark night of the soul in itself. Like one of the many ways to lead it, because I can't even imagine. I've actually, I've had advertising professors that tell me that I would not make it in the advertising world, but the way they said it was not cruel. The story's coming up for some reason, so I'll share it. Where yeah, he was like, yeah, it was copywriting class, and I sucked at copywriting. Like I could not, for the life of me, copyright to sell a product. Like when it's in those terms, my brain just doesn't work. I'm better at writing from the heart, but when I have to try to sell something, part of advertising curriculum. I just sucked. And he's like, Jess, like, Jessica, you're like, you're just this light in the room. I see you. you're so good. And I see how hard you try. And it's like, I, and you're too pure. I don't know what words he used, but he was like, you're just too pure to be in advertising. It's just a very aggressive world. Like I see you as somebody who will be in hospice beds, helping someone, you know, transition to the other side, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like you see me doing that more than writing copy and I think that was like a wound that I carry like I'm not eloquent I can't speak English I can't speak Chinese I can't speak Spanish like everywhere I went and you know and I remember that story with such like harm it feels really heartwarming and funny like oh you don't know the fire in me because I I'm here to change the world I'm here to do big things maybe not through the traditional sense and maybe that's why I sucked at it but the fact that he was like, I see your light. I just don't know how to place it in the advertising world. That's what I took from it. But I'm like, you see me in a hospice helping people. It's almost like before the concept of deaf doula was a thing. That's what he saw me as. And I'm just like, that's so oddly specific. But okay, I'll take your feedback, whatever that means. <laughs> Maybe that is where we um have share a past life, like, you know, like, because my whole life was like, again, grandma have, has worked in, as a nurse. My my mom have always said, you know, you should go be a nurse. Right. right. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. There's, there is some linkage here, linkage there. It's really interesting. Sorry, that was that was totally a tangent. But I'm I'm curious, sharing like listening to to what you just shared with that professor. The question that popped into my mind was, has it got anything to do with the the Chinese Asian tenacity to need to break free of something? It's like we need that intensity. We need that level of almost pressure mm. to like that that's actually what our subconscious has attracted into our experience like I'm so grateful I'm so grateful for every single um experience every single teacher even for those who told me that I'll never make it mm. including my parents um Oof. like you know I'm so grateful for them but I'm like there is something I have a, I have the question I'm not gonna say this is the answer but like I'm like I wonder if there's there's something that that Asian tenacity that mm. that that ac that actually makes us comfortable, mm. whether we are aware of it or not, whether we are um we agree about we agree on it, but I'm just like I'm seeing a pattern here, and I'm I'm inviting a question. Yeah, I love that. I love that you brought that forth because it's such a I love questions because I feel like it can open so many doors. I. I think that Asian tenacity for me 
And now that I have a little bit of context of human design, I think it fuels my defined heart when somebody tells me you can't and I really want it. I, I'm going to show you in my way. Like it's always been very quiet way of proving. It takes time. Yeah. I'm not very in your face. Like, because I've had, you know, my gate 10, you know, the gate, the behavior of the self is very, it has a fifth line. So there's been a lot of people in my life that underestimated me or just expect yeah. me. They're like, you're this way. So how do you expect? And I'm just like, it's fine. I I don't care that you misread me. I know who I am in my course. So I'm approve you. <laughs> but I've seen this mm -hmm. energy, you know, to my siblings or other relatives, and it can crush them as well. And it could be parts of their design. I think we have fire in different parts of us like you, I think you're manifester and you're like, you know, I, I can show you this and me, I think my divine heart really helped me be like, take this and prove to them wrong because I do have the will to prove when it is aligned mm -hmm. to me I do have the will to like step and crush it <laughs> um mm -hmm. and I think like so many elements in my chart does support me in like fighting for this like I'm I have the 38 you have the 28 it's like I'm a fight like I'm gonna fight in my way I'm not going to be loud I know other people in my family that are like if you say something that they take into offense it will like be up in your face like no what did you say and like I'm not that person I just don't have the mm -hmm. energy but it's very right for them it's kind of funny sometimes I'm like oh the aunt say that and then the relatives say that or like the cousin you know just friends and family that sometimes don't understand each other yeah mm -hmm. I feel like I blanked on your question and I just went sideways <laughs> no no it it it, it, it no it's, it didn't no it made, made total sense but um but yeah, that's something for us to consider, at least. And I consider it, you know, because I I know I know how built for intensity. I mean, you get to see a lot of my behind the scenes, and you're like, Jamie, you're you're doing so much inner work, and I'm just like, what? This is just normal, like that you have not seen me on overdrive yet <laughs> on the inner on the inner work and on inner transformation, like you have not seen it yet and and I I'm really glad to not have to go there but but um mentors have told me to like slow it down mm -hmm. and and maybe this is a stubbornness maybe this is something that I need to you know this is part of the spiritual immaturity who knows of like if I know that I'm moving through something uncomfortable. Why would I draw it out for six months just to prove that I do it slowly, just to mm -hmm. embrace, you know, hashtag slow. Mm -hmm. If I know that there is something that I need to transform, I will sit with the thing until it blows up. You know, I, I will sit there with like a magnifying glass on the metaphoric pimple and like point the sun at it and go yeah. like, all right, come on. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Let's like, let's hatch, you know? Yeah. And well, in a way, you're also built for this. As a manifesto, yes. your pacing is a lot faster. And I think I'm I'm curious, like, you know, I know there's so many modalities you've embraced with human design and the additional ones. Like, how did they help you accept more of like your pacing, your need for security to know more like the, the first line? Like, it's always feeling insecure. And it is such a gift for us because we know you've done your research, you've dived into it, but it can feel like never enough for the person with the first line, which drives you to do the things. But also like, how do you, how did that language help you kind of relax into like, oh, nothing's wrong with me just because I want to know more. I just want the information. <laughs> I move fast. That's just how my energy propels itself. And then I rest. Yeah, I, I really love human design for that because it in many ways it reminds me of that it's safe to be me so in that in that way knowing that i can refer to resources and of course i've done like two courses on human design readers and i don't read human design uh, but can speak to it can can uh, re uh receive the the gifts from it um and have conversations and friendships if not for human design i don't know if we would ever meet um, <laughs> and so i'm very very grateful for that but but specifically for with human design, um, I've, yeah, it has reminded me where I have doubted myself. Mm. It has reminded me like, it's okay. It's always that little whisper, you know, it's like, 
but what if you just did it your way? It's given me that. At the same time, because I I see most a lot of like you know I want I I I love seeing multiple perspectives and all perspectives are true. Um, I'm gonna continue on that. All perspectives are true in the right motivation. We've got to check the motivation, got to check the agenda, and only the person can feel it for themselves. So um, I fought human design as every good modality, as every kind of innocuous, innocent modality. It's doing its job if it makes you fight it. Mm. You know, it's pulling up the fire in you because no fire, no transformation. Like water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, who knows what the Fahrenheit conversion is. Proof, like you, you can't boil the water. Like it changes state at 100 degrees Celsius, not 99, not 65, not 35, not 20. Like, mm. you know, it, it it needs to boil. And so, um, yeah, I fought human design because I'm just like, you say that I need to only do this and I'm not going to listen to that. How dare you? The textbook told me to do that. <laughs> 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 Which I think actually, you know, it's a healthy relationship to have, like with all the modalities, with all the things that we take in, there's always mm. the danger of just buying someone's truth without really checking in with ourselves. You know, yes. everybody has a different version of their truth, but like, make sure that you are aware of what you're ingesting and how it affects you, especially yes. if you feel like it's keeping you small or if it's telling you you have to do a certain way. It's like, mm, yes. what is it? play experiment how can you use it in a way that is fun <laughs> it doesn't become too restricted exactly exactly and it's you know you've got to road test it mm, coming yeah. from the first line you've got to road test it road test the thing before you talk about it mm. you know and then speak from your own experience I'm just totally doing the five one thing right now it's kind of I'm like oh my god Jamie like put it away I'm not gonna put it away I'm just gonna Don't you know, put it away. proud about it let it out let it out I need this <laughs> we all need this in our lives but like yeah you know like speak from your own experience there's nothing more magnetic to speak from your own experience you know because when you shame and blame and kind of point fingers out what does that say about you who, what, you know, what are you trying to do here? And I'm not sh not pointing this out to shame and blame anyone, but to invite that self inquiry, because and 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 give the solution. Such a five one thing. Oh my god, <laughs> human design in oh, real life. <laughs> literally, human design in IRL. Like you know, hashtag podcast. Another podcast we're starting. Mm -hmm. Um, um, it's it's. We might be doing that. Okay, we can observe that. We don't have to shame and blame ourselves. What's actually happening is like water is trying to boil inside of you. You're trying to change something inside of you. So what is the pattern that we are actually trying to change here? Through the expression of, you know, pointing fingers, getting mad, comparing, things, you know, all that stuff comes through, right? And again, life is going to support us to to transform life is supporting us to move towards health like which cell in your body doesn't want health mm -hmm. which cell in the body doesn't want to receive more life force so so every everything is is you know to be able to understand the elemental qualities and the energetic anatomy within the body like that that's where you know we can take something um as innocent as like disagreeing with someone and like you know wanting to like you do this and so therefore this and if you are a Gemini son that means this you know any of these kind of itty bitty kind of petty pointy kind of nurse um what's what's the energy behind it like what's the emotion here why is the emotion what is what is the transformation that this emotion is initiating us into yeah what right is it telling us about ourselves exactly exactly you know you could be just chopping carrots you know like it doesn't have to be angry it doesn't have to be loud it doesn't have to be pointy it doesn't have to hurt anyone yeah. but it's just like I'm not I'm not inviting everyone to go and you know investigate 
chopping carrots and what does it tell about you that's a that that was a yeah don't do that do, do whatever you want do whatever you need but like you know it's like yeah okay what's what's needing to transform here within me and for me and that's what I feel really passionate at this point in my career and my practitionership um to teach and educate and inform others of how to read within themselves mm -hmm. so so um, I'm trying to like circle back to your question around like yes human design has been such a balm mm -hmm. in in reminding me of what can be my baseline mm -hmm. notice my languaging what can be my baseline not what is my baseline right yeah. different energy different yeah. voice different tone different motivation in what it can be my baseline and dare I experiment with it at the same time all the other modalities has also been so supportive yeah. and and every modality speaking like a true first line every modality has a different place and has a different um point of attack mm. strong words point of attack that's what came through I've tried to like go on no say something gentler Jamie but anyway we just we're blowing with it so like every modality has a, a different point of attack and it's 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 up to the practitioner as in we are all practitioners of life we are all practitioner in this human journey so it's up to the practitioner to clarify you know where they stand in it to not lose ourselves to the modalities because again spoken like a true first line been mm. there done that and you know grew from it and so again so grateful always always grateful um so to use yoga for, ex for example yoga helps you to get closer to also your baseline but there is a question mark that comes with that, which I never, it didn't quite hit, didn't quite sit right with me, you know, because I'm like, where's the efficiency in that? So I have to meditate for 10,000 hours and then I know how to speak to my mom tonight. Mm -hmm. That's impossible. You know, mm -hmm. like I need to answer to this email by tonight by close of business yeah yoga practice is beautiful because it 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 brings us into the body it connects us to our breaths and it you know brings us back into homeostasis and and parasympathetic all that stuff all the beautiful stuff but I'm always like okay but just doing a 20 30 three minute 90 minute practice but so how do I word this email that I need to send by close of business? You know, how will I confront this difficult emotion that I'm avoiding? How will I say no, you know? And so that part that has always been my question mark, not again, I'm not shaming. I'm not blaming. I'm not canceling. I'm not hating on anything from experience, from road testing this for the thousands of hours, waking up at 3 a.m. and all that jazz, I'm like, that's really great as a regulatory uh, uh, body regulation. It, it's, a, it's, the, it's a slow burn. There, mm -hmm. are, there are things that are slow burn and there are things that kind of snaps you back into here and now. Yeah. And, and we need both. And that's why, you know, with what I'm building and what I'm wanting to birth into the world through my work is to be able to provide an educational resource, educational platform where people have access to, do I need the, you know, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm not just feeling general anxious or anxiety. I mean, who isn't experiencing anxiety right now? I don't know. Like, phone me up. You have you have a secret. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, I'm, I'm not just like, okay, do this practice for anxiety. Listen to this 
meditation for anxiety. You know, like that's beautiful, that's great. But also I want something very specific. I'm anxious to start. So then here, here's something I prepared earlier. It's at this link, it's at this, you know, shelf, turn left here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Almost like a energetic apothecary. I'm mm-hmm. like, help me tune up. Do you want to talk about, I know you're birthing something into the world. Do you want to share more about the name or stay tuned? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy happy to share about the name. So, the the new evolution of my business it's transformed many names. I have had so much sh- uh, shame and and shadow about that. Of like, you can't just change your name every like year and a half. Like, no one's going to trust you. But then, thank goodness for other manifestors also just doing their thing. If you anyone knows P- Peter Kelly, she's also Australian. She's on the other side of the country in Perth currently. Um, like she just like changes names, like a drop of a hat. So I'm like, if she can do it, I can too. In fact, I've already done it. So my business, Instagram handle, whatever that even means, like that doesn't mean anything. It's just a bunch of alphabets, but the next evolution of what I'm building and creating, it's the name is self-occupancy. And it's not just occupying the self, as in the egoic self, but self with the lexigraphy. Lexigraphy is a is a thing. Word lexigraphy is a thing. So, background story, first line things. Must give people the background story first. Bring um, it in. <laughs> um, self, spirit, and courage, life force. So, uh, word lexigraphy basically is not just you know keep it simple, stupid. It needs to embody. It needs to give you an accurate like emotional experience of the word because kiss keep it simple stupid is Mm -hmm. like wherein that actually embodies the experience and the emotion of a kiss it doesn't and again nothing's nothing's right or wrong it just is you know there's space for every everything to be right um but so self spirit encouraged life force is what self-occupancy really is built to open doors within people. How can I occupy this space where life is lived, where I get to play? Play, yes, curious, experiment, very like highlight, Vegas lights, all capital letters. <laughs> um, like what, what does that feel like? How does that feel like if I was to occupy that space where life is being spirit-led and I allow and I trust that spirit encouraged life force rather than I should, which is very definitive, right? Yeah. Very definitive, very uh, rigid, very dogmatic, very institutionalized. This says this, so therefore that. And so that's really the essence of it. And there's going to be many arms and legs um, but one of that um, arm and maybe probably a leg maybe <laughs> is around having these, you know, resources that people can just tap into for mm-hmm. when, when they need. Like, you know, yeah, general anxiety, yes, 10,000 of hours of meditation is going to help. Great, do that. And when you need to hit sand in like three hours and you are stuck, mm-hmm. Here's something that is really short and sweet that specifically targets that. I feel anxious to start or I feel anxious to finish because when I hit send by at 5 p.m. on this email, I've completed my PhD. Mm-hmm. Like that's that like I I have never done a PhD, but I understand that's really scary. That that's that's a pimple popping. Yeah. That's a major pivot, right? Yeah. Or maybe yeah. you hit the, the end and you'll quit your job like you know whatever the thing is whatever the thing is yeah yeah it's almost like for lack of a better term it's the energetic regulation right we go through these things which is a burst of energy great how do we hold it how do we nourish ourselves how do we bring back to ourselves instead of disassociating numbing or whatever it is that is so popular nowadays and then things don't have to be overly complicated sometimes yes no. we need to do you know the twenty thousand hours to really teach our body other times like maybe a five minute maybe a conversation one session 
could be enough. Exactly. Exactly. And I want to speak to self-occupancy for, for me. Like it's, 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 it's very, it's not very new in my system. I've, I've had it kind of in my field for over three years. Wait, yes, over three years. I was like, how do we do, how do we count? Can we count? Um, yeah, it's over, over three years, but it's something still very fairly new that I've kind of announced and informed into the world. And such a big part of it, this final portion that I still feel like I am moving through and may w- may well move through for the the life of self occupancy and the probably my whole life, um, the rest of my life, is that I don't have to overextend myself mm-hmm. in creating this because I cannot see clients day and night forevermore like that I've been I've done that loved it was incredibly you know like transformative both for me and everyone involved but here we go again it's like at what cost yeah at what cost not at the cost of me losing spaciousness and freedom Mm -hmm. not me needing to abide by you know, you work from this hour to this hour only on these days and you need to show up in these studios at this time and then be kind of bound and have my life force interrupted. Mm. Yeah. And and that this is such a manifest thing, right? Like it's like when it's go time, you go and you go until it's done. <laughs> if I'm consistently interrupted, then it's really damaging for what's trying to come through because it's I have to consistently dismiss it yeah. you know yeah. if if a child is screaming you don't put it in the washing machine and close the door like right and if I have when something's coming through I'm like a baby's about to be born guys like it's like no nah, yeah. 20 minutes get to the studio teach this class now yeah it's to me energetically literally feels like putting a screaming child in the washing machine and closing the door yeah yeah because the like, power like, is trying to move through this is trying to come to you that's what I envision as a manifesto like that's why the you know your your theme is like the not shadow shadow I don't want to use not self you know the shadow theme is anger it's because it's the energetic buildup it's like the pimple that is so ready to pop and it's just hurting it's achy but you're not able to release it and like and you're not just releasing for the sake of releasing, you're releasing to another expression, you're releasing, you're creating another timeline, like whatever it is, it's this force that's plowing through and being interrupted can be just like, oh, like zapping you. And then when do you start? How do you even start the cycle? Like when it's interrupted, it's like a, I don't know, black hole. I don't know enough of the universe or a star exploding, be interrupted. Like, can you even pick it back up? Lack of yeah <laughs> knowledge in universe terms. <laughs> No, I mean, like, has anyone tried to stop an earthquake? Good luck. Yeah, basically. Have you tried to stop a volcano erupting? And that's why I love the pimple <laughs> analogy, because it's like when a volcano is erupting, it's erupting. You, 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 like humans cannot stop it, no matter how big or rich you are, how many yeah. boats and cars and houses and millions of dollars you have or power, you like the precedent of blah. Yeah. Try and stop a volcano. Try and stop an earthquake. Let's see question mark <laughs> <laughs> I love that I um, have so many more questions that I can go but I'm just curious you know especially for people listening and you know if people Asian background that can resonate with us or somebody who's a manifester what was what is something that you're allowing more of yourself right now spaciousness trust And intentionally inviting myself to take up space in what confidence feels like, that feels authentic to inside my heart and inside my body. Because confidence is a it's a lifelong course and and 
I know firsthand, firsthand, first line, very funny, Jamie, um, Mm -hmm. of how intimidation, arrogance, obnoxiousness, like the over-inflamed expression of it can be also masked as confidence. And I can see through that within myself where you like puff up your chest and you're like, look at me, which is again, beautiful. Nothing, you know, everything is welcome here, but really embodying that quiet confidence in, in, in really, again, trusting in that spirit and courage life force. And what I didn't say earlier was like, what's the, the opposing force of that is the ego is when our essence essence getting obstructed that's when we know that oh check yourself Mm. and when i create the arms and legs and body and brains of of self-occupancy not when i'm creating i'm creating it at the moment and when that gets released out into the world um when i build enough confidence in myself and in trusting the right timing um, there will be resources to kind of, you know, tap back in and, and self-check in points because, you know, ego like that gets dissected in so many different modalities and so many different ways. There's like, literally it's a lifelong course. And mm. so, and so, you know, I am on a mission to create like digestible, easily accessible using language that you don't need 10,000 hours to study. Um, Again, that's also great. If that leads you there, go ahead. Um, But it's just like, how can we just give people the distilled version that they can apply right now and experience it right now Mm -hmm. and invite that openness, you know, and to really trust the initiation the initiatory the quiet initiatory uh force of a manifester to create something maybe it's a two minute thing maybe it's you know i don't know a couple of hundred words that they read like i don't know um or t- two questions one question yeah. that they ask themselves that they can then tone their system to uh regulate itself themselves by asking a bunch of questions and that that is enough to carry them and and yeah that that's enough for for me for me for that to be enough for me Mm -hmm. um and to trust the ripple effects that it can have that it doesn't need to be 5,000 bells and whistles and, you know, follow-up calls and all of this kind of things. And I feel like that's where the, the we're moving towards anyway, you know, like towards, yes, interdependency, always, we're always connected. If anyone follows me on my stories, like I'm forever posting about this fly and this frog and this bird. And I'm just like, Jamie, who like people are confused with what you do, but hey, <laughs> I speak a different language. <laughs> speak language of nature I communicate with nature but um but but yeah now I've lost my train of thought anyway it was perfect 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 it's such a beautiful encapsulation of what you stand for what you believe in and also how potent it can be for those that are ready to go through that path whatever it is whatever that changes and I think there's so much trust, you know, in the work that we've done, like just in ourselves with each other, you know, whatever we do with our clients is also the trust that this is going to simmer. Like this one session, this five minute audio, this two minute, this question is going to simmer. And yes, hopefully you find some sort of relief or tending to in the moment, but it's just going to add on. And that's what it is, right? It doesn't have to be overly complicated, scary and painful. Sometimes things no. can be with ease. Yeah. 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 Back back to that quiet confidence and and um trust. Total reliance upon spiritual timing. 
I have one more question. <laughs> okay. One more question. Just out of curiosity, you know, you're someone who's very open and spiritual. Was it something that you always embraced when you were younger or it was a part of you that you had to kind of renourish back? I was very fortunate to grow up in a household that really honored um the lunar cycles you know from the Chinese tradition maybe it's Buddhist I think it was Taoist growing up and so and maybe that comes with the Chinese uh culture as well um there was a lot of superstitions mm. again call it traditions call it superstitions who knows who cares <laughs> um and so I was someone who got preyed on a lot from different different uh religions I was someone who used to have a lot of trouble sleeping I got fed full cream milk powder growing up so no wonder I had trouble sleeping just on a physiological physical level <laughs> um anyway um but I used to wake up screaming at night I used to have nightmares every single night call it the milk powder or call it past life stuff go figure um probably more the latter um and so it only highlighted like how sensitive I was and also how intuitive my grandma was my paternal grandma was she basically brought me up and um so there were like I don't want to call them spells but like there were all these rituals you know made over me and over my the cot that I slept in and I don't know whether it was my grandma or a priest or someone said like oh the the cotton in the mattress was reused cotton from a dead person's bed and so I was getting haunted in my sleep and so we they bought my family bought me a new mattress or like got the mattress uh remade with you know fresh unused cotton and my nightmares subsided so yeah and I always had like a rosary nearby I had a prayer book under my pillow yeah so in that sense that was what I like that was when I was still a tiny baby so I couldn't even speak English so I was brought up around that around you know we would smudge the house with frankincense every Friday and we would you know burn the what they what are they even called do you know what they're called oh my gosh I'm blanking big time the papers that we burn at I don't, oh, I don't know it's the I've, moon seen, or the full moon. I've seen what them, are they called my family they abandon all their spirituality when when yeah I think yeah we have no, no, my my dad used to joke, um, the god I believe is Fun Gao, which means that sleep because they you know it sounds it's like a pun. So he's like, I believe in sleep because it sounds like a, a sleep god or something like that. So I'm like, okay. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm blanking big time and I feel it's okay. A lot of shame about this, but oh, no. but yeah, like there there were a lot of rituals that were done around me growing up mm -hmm. um and so that was kind of my foundation um around spirituality mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed listening at 16 I got baptized as a Catholic because mom woke up one day and decided we needed a religion <laughs> um <laughs> and so we got baptized but I really loved the contemplation that it offered the, the act of you know listening to a story being read you know passage in a bible I call them stories they are stories um and then being able to distill what's the learning here mm -hmm. and then to then take that as a first line does mm -hmm. go oh right yeah they talked about honesty or they talked about you know I use that that contemplation 
to then go, but how can I apply this into my daily life? What, mm-hmm. what, how can that help me in this particular conflict that I am faced with for this week? You know, going yeah. to school, maybe it's this fear or, you know, co- so you can call this the cross of education, like <laughs> cross of education problems, cross of education um, things. Yeah. Um, I've, it's almost like that's like, has come inbuilt in me. Mm-hmm. And I never really agreed or never really, you never really set right of like taking something blatantly for what it is. Mm. Yes. I've, I'm always that annoying, annoying or otherwise. Um, curiosity of like, but there's more, yeah. but there's more. I'm always like searching, yeah. you know, like, yes, thou shall not do this. I mean, like, look at the eight limbs of yoga, the 10 commandments, the five this the three that yeah so I've always yeah question and and sorry I'm like what did you even ask in the first place spirituality um but yeah to always be a uh respectful of the unseen Mm. forces and if anything that was a big chunk of uh I think my whole life you know to learn to pray who are we praying to doesn't really matter anymore but to mm. learn to have the courage to ask yeah. says everything because even the courage to ask yeah. opens the door for life to meet us there oh. right I no no do- no more dogmatism we, again if that's that's that that serves you like keep going you know keep going trust yourself don't yeah. listen to me don't like just I'm <laughs> here for jokes and entertainment (laughs) most of the time um (laughs) really it's like this is a big comedy show but like what isn't a comedy show well there's a lot of serious things that are not comedy I'm I'm, take that back but but yeah like really praying and trusting that 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 I'm taken care of you know even in the hardest darkest moments of like going I I swear I do not belong in this family Mm. I I don't know. They must have brought the wrong baby home. And I genuinely thought that for a lot of my childhood and, and wishing, like trying to prove that that is right. Yeah, yeah. You know, bif, 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 yeah. Yeah. So to, to, to learn to ask, maybe mm-hmm. pray is too triggering of a word, but learn to ask, yeah. you know, what helped me. And, and the thing is like, I've never really, again, and this is something that maybe it's inbuilt, maybe my aunt influenced this, maybe like whatever, who cares? Doesn't matter. But like I never ask for, I want this teacher. I'm bring I'm talking primary school, Jamie. Like I never really ask, I want to sit next to this person and I want this teacher and I want this specific experience. I've always prayed for help me be okay with whatever I get given. Mm-hmm. It's now that I like even say that out loud makes me emotional because like wow I've always known there we go when Jamie's in the room there's gonna be tears my own tears like I've always known it's like I can't control the the outcome no one can no one can really who are you kidding if you think you can control the outcome you know you know yeah I'm just gonna leave that there's an open-ended question but like help me be okay no matter what and that's the thing I've always prayed for, and I still do in a big way. I have nothing to add. I feel like it will take away from it. But Jamie, thank you for sharing so much of what you share today. And we'll have a lot more conversations coming up. So stay tuned. Um, I'll share your website information, anything specific on how people can work with you if they're interested in. Thank you so much, Jess, for holding space and for all that you do. And I'm so grateful for our friendship. I'm so, so grateful that life brought us together. Likewise. I'm grateful for you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for listening too. Yes. So much, so much gratitude. Mm -hmm. All right. Stay safe and take care, everybody. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, 
check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.